I want to give you guys a few quarterbacks in the SEC that are going to explode and break out during the 2024 college football season. The first guy I want to start off with is LSU gunslinger Gunnar Nussmeyer, no pun intended. He doesn't have a lot of experience. He's only played in a handful of games, but the games that I have seen of Gunnar Nussmeyer, this dude has been really impressive. And I didn't really too much watch his bowl game, but I definitely remember when he came in not too long ago in the SEC championship game against Georgia and he was lining that defense up. And it doesn't matter if Georgia was up a lot of points and they were playing not to give up a lot of big plays. Like, listen, anytime you have the kind of performance that Gunnar Nussmeyer had against Georgia, you're stamped. It's hard to have the kind of game that he had against that Georgia defense, no matter if they're playing a style of defense that's, you know, going to make it easier for you to generate a lot of yards. Like, I was really impressed with what Gunnar Nussmeyer did in that SEC championship in replace of Jaden Daniels. And he has one of the strongest arms in college football, too. So with the wide receiving core that he's going to have around him, a top 10 offensive line coming into this year, I see him as a dark horse Heisman contender. Not a lot of people are mentioning Gunnar Nussmeyer's name when it comes to the Heisman conversation, but he definitely could end up being a finalist if everything goes right for LSU this year. Next up, Brock Vandergriff. This is one of the biggest transfers in the SEC this year in terms of who could have a big impact on the playoff picture in this conference because Kentucky is good enough to be a playoff team. They're good in the trenches on the offensive line and defensive line. They got good receivers, Dane Key, Barry and Brown. Both of those dudes were highly touted when they were coming out of high school. And they were held back by disappointing quarterback play that you received from Devin Leary last year. Kentucky's one of those teams that they don't find good quarterbacks in recruiting. They get them via the portal. You hit on Will Levis, but you whiffed on Devin Leary. Brock Vandengriff, I think, is going to be a huge hit for them. He has spent the last couple of years at Georgia on their bench. He was really sought after when he was coming out of high school. He has a really good arm. I don't think he's the most athletic guy in the world, but he does have enough where you do have to account for his mobility. And if he can end up being an upgrade from Devin Leary and he ends up living up to his potential that he had coming out of high school, Kentucky is a really scary team. Because they have everything that you need to win in this conference. Everybody says you got to win in the trenches if you want to win. They're going to have good trench play. They're going to have a good defense. And they got a new OC who I think can be an upgrade from Leon Cohen. He comes from Boise State. We always know that Kentucky always has good running back play. But they never really have consistently good quarterback play. Even that year when they won 10 games with... Chris Rod and um, who was it? It was Terry something. Terry Wilson, that quarterback. Terry Wilson wasn't that good. You know, he was good running the football, but his throwing ability was less to be desired. Well, Brock Vandergriff, this may be the most talented quarterback that you've ever had in the history of your program. You've never had a quarterback that's had the ability to throw the football that Brock Vandergriff has. Now, I know that this is a lot for a dude who hasn't really proven much. But from what I've seen out of him in high school and a few glimpses of him in the spring game, like this dude can really spin it with the best of them. And if he ends up panning out, look out SEC because Kentucky definitely is going to be in the running for the SEC championship. That's how good this team could be if Brock Vandergriff plays up to his potential. And I think that he's going to have a breakout year and we could see Kentucky being a nine-win team. Connor Wigman. He's entering his third season at Texas A&M. And some of you guys may say that he's already broken out, but I can't say that he has because we haven't really seen a good amount of him. He only played in a handful of games last season before his year got cut short due to an injury that he sustained. But against my Hurricanes, he was lighting us up. And yeah, Texas A&M lost that game, but he was really impressive. He's really accurate. He always looks pretty cool, calm, and collected under pressure. 
I think that he throws a really good deep ball and he has potential to be a future first round pick in the NFL. I've talked to a scout that said that he really likes Connor Wigman's film, the little bit that he has up. But Connor Wigman under Mike Elko, you know, he could really go off and he could be another quarterback like Brock Vandegrift, who could have a huge impact on a college football playoff picture. Because imagine if Connor Wigman ends up panning out and he lives up to his potential. Because remember when he ended up signing with Texas A&M on early national signing day, Jimbo Fisher considered him to be the best quarterback in the nation. And I promise you, they could have gotten any quarterback that they wanted that year with the amount of money that they were spending on that recruiting class. And from what we've seen out of Connor Wigman so far, like this dude actually is pretty talented. For Texas A&M, if this dude continues to play as well as what he's had and he gets better and builds on what he's done, Texas A&M definitely could not only win the SEC, but they could do some damage in the playoffs. This is one of the best rosters in America. This is a top 10 roster at worst going into this year. The only question is how good is this offensive line going to be? Now, if the offensive line shows up along with Connor Wigman, they definitely are going to have a say in the SEC championship race. So Connor Wigman is another quarterback that I think is going to break out this season. Nico Imaviava. Ooh, isn't that a fun name to pronounce? Once you finally learn how to pronounce it, you always want to say it. Nico Imaviava. Imaviava. I just love saying the name, and I love watching this dude play. I watched his debut against Iowa in the Cheeses Bowl, I believe it was, and he was carving that defense up. Imagine, think of Trevor Lawrence, but Hawaiian, more athletic, and with a better physique. That's what you get with Nico Imaviava. They were flying this dude out on recruiting visits on a private jet. You don't get that luxury if you aren't that good. And I believe that Nico Imaviava is going to be better than the quarterback play that they've gotten the last two years out of Joe Milton and Hendon Hooker. And Hendon Hooker should have won Heisman that year. Okay, we, we all know that. I don't even want to talk about it, man. But Nuki, Nico Imaviava, with his mobility, it gives him more upside than Joe Milton and Hendon Hooker because although those dudes could run, they don't have the kind of wills that Nico has. And he also has a stronger arm than Hendon Hooker. He doesn't have the arm or the rifle that Joe Milton has, but, you know, he can sling that ball with the best of them. And with the wide receivers that Tennessee has going into this year, you know, they didn't really have that last year. They had some injuries, and they weren't really deep at that position. They're deep at wideout this year, and they're going to have a really good offensive line. So with everything that Nico has in place, he definitely has a really good chance of being able to win the Heisman. And he was the second-rated quarterback coming out of that 2023 class right behind Arch Manning. And some people will argue that he was the best quarterback in that recruiting cycle. And Arch Manning only got that number one label because of his last name. So I'm expecting big things out of Nico Imaviava. And I think that he's going to put up some huge numbers this season for the Vols. Jackson Arnold, right behind Nico Imaviava in that 2023 recruiting cycle. He wasn't too far off. He was a top five rated quarterback. He was the Gatorade player of the year. His final year in high school, he also won the Elite 11 camp as well. He had an up and down debut in that bowl game against Arizona. And I put money on Arizona to win that game, but he was making me a little bit nervous because the first quarter, he didn't look good. But in the second and third quarters, he really started to heat up. He got settled in. And once he really started to cook, you really started to see the kind of damage and why he was rated as high as what he was coming out of high school because he has really good mobility a really good arm think johnny manzel but times 100 everything that's what you get in jackson arnold with what oklahoma has at wide receiver gavin saw chuck at running back and that offensive line plays well he's going to be a huge reason why oklahoma wins this conference because I've been saying it all offseason that people are severely underestimating Oklahoma. Most people have them at a 7, 8-win team. They, to me, are a 9-win team and better 
if Jackson Arnold ends up blowing up this year like how I believe he will, the arm strength is there. He has really good mobility. As long as his offensive line can play well, expect him to put up huge numbers. Lenore Sellers. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't know about Lenore Sellers because he doesn't have as much clout as what Jackson Arnold and Nico Imaviava have because he was a three-star recruit. But he was a big pickup for South Carolina, big in-state recruit. He also has really fantastic physical traits, great athleticism. This dude runs like 4-4 at 240-something pounds. And I don't want to call him an Anthony Richardson clone, but he looks pretty damn close to one. Incredible arm strength. I mean, this dude threw some damn missiles in the spring game. And when this dude gets up in the open field, good luck trying to tackle him if you're a defensive back because I've seen a few glimpses of Lenore Sellers running the ball, and it's just been downright scary, man. There was a run that he had against Vanderbilt when he just completely just ran over a dude like Marshawn Lynch, 2013 style, just put that shoulder down and bah! And I was just like, damn, this is what South Carolina has at quarterback this year? Like, the thing with Lenore Sellers is that you don't know how good he's going to be year one. Okay, it's just like with South Carolina, their offensive line is a little shaky, and he's not going to be throwing to the amount of talent at wide receiver that Nico and Jackson Arnold are. But if he ends up panning out, South Carolina could be a dangerous team this year with Lenore Sellers, man. He has the kind of skill set that could single-handedly win games for them. The offensive line, even if it's boo-boo again this year, he has the athleticism where he can go for 150 on the ground. He can also make like 80, 70-yard touchdown throws. And they got a wide receiver that could be in the Olympics this year. And he's like 6'5", running 4'4 himself. He's a freak. But Lenore Sellers, man, look out for him this season. Not a lot of people are mentioning this dude, but if he ends up panning out, Shane Beamer, I think that the hot seat talk starts to die down a little bit for him, and South Carolina gets the six wins easily because my only question really is the offensive line and Lenore Sellers. Even though I believe in him, there's no guarantee that he's going to pan out, but I like this dude's game. He also has a really good football IQ. He has a high GPA, so he stays in the books. So I'm expecting big things out of Lenore Sellers. If you are looking for any quarterback, from this list who nobody is talking about who could be a dark horse Heisman contender definitely look at Lenore Sellers man because he has that kind of skill set with that athleticism and the kind of frame that he has he could end up being one of the most dominant quarterbacks in this conference this season depending on how good he ends up coming along in his second year with the program but these are my seven or these are my six breakout quarterbacks the watch in the SEC for the 2024 college football season. Let me know if there's a guy that I missed or a guy that got left off that you feel should be on here.